Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I have a first. I, I'm welcoming Claire Diaz Ortiz, who is in Buenos Aires, Argentina. First from Argentina. How are you doing, Claire? I'm doing great today. Hello from the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, yeah, it's very exciting. And uh, uh, Claire is an author, speaker, trusted advisor uh, who helps high-performing high brands and their leaders excel in the digital age. And you have a new book, right, which is what we want to talk about today. Uh, and, your new bro and your new book is, do you want to tell us about the new book and then we'll get into talking I about it? I do. So my new book, this is my ninth and I'm super excited. It's called Social Media Success for Every Brand and it comes out with HarperCollins Leadership in the end of October. So I'm super excited. Yeah, that's fantastic. So um, let's let's dive straight into it. So so social media has been around for a while right now and uh, obviously and there's been a lot of uh, you know companies have dived into it and uh, and done a lot over the years and and I, I always get the feeling nowadays that we're in this a lot of people are in this kind of mode now of they feel like they need to do social media, but but they're not quite sure anymore why they're doing it or what's you know what's the advantages <laughs> of it or what benefits they're getting from it. Uh, does that make sense? Absolutely. You know, when we were, uh, I was recently up doing some of the recording for the promo videos for the book, and we recorded one video where I'm standing in front of the camera and some, you know, of my friends behind the camera, so you can't see them, start throwing spaghetti at my face, right? <laughs> and the idea here is that this is what it feels like to engage in social media marketing so much of the time. You're just throwing spaghetti at a wall. Sometimes it sticks, sometimes it doesn't. You have absolutely no idea what worked, but it did. And so you just sort of keep pumping random money into things, hoping that you'll kind of have that luck again. And it's really a problem and it's really a broken system. And so that's kind of really the premise of this book is to say, hey, stop, you know, throwing your time and money down the drain or, you know, stop throwing spaghetti at the wall and start trying to, you know, build a plan a long-term plan that plan that as i say is about building a brand and you know not trying to go viral um right. you know john one of the stories i tell in the beginning of the book which is really it's it's an important story to me because it's a story that i think many of us as consultants independent professionals can often relate to i, w I was working with a brand one time mm -hmm. and they were trying to basically relaunch a kind of failed startup right? And they asked me to create this really intense marketing plan to hold relaunch their brand. I did all this th stuff. I worked for two to three months on this plan. And, and I came to them with it. And basically, we had this sit down meeting about this, you know, 60 page document of all the things that I was suggesting we do. And they kind of said, well, this is all well and good, but we think that if you can just help us get Mark tw Cuban to tweet about us, we'll go viral. And then, you know, we'll blow up and everything will be great. And this was such a just example of what I hear all the time as a social media yeah. marketing person, right? It's just this idea of going viral is the only thing that matters. We have no idea how to do it, but we're going to put all our time and energy into it. And and it's funny, just coming back to that, because I, I, I totally agree with you. And I think that idea of brand, because it's even sometimes like people will come and with, with the best of intentions, right? And they'll come and they'll say, oh, I just saw this thing on Instagram that was really cool. I saw this thing. We should do something like that. And you hate to be the kind of you know, buzzkill and everything, but to say, yeah, it is really cool for them. But it kind of is, would be a bit odd if we did it. And it doesn't really fit in with, it's not really who we are. And could we become that? Yeah, but then we'd have to become that like full on, right? As opposed to otherwise we're schizophrenic brand, right? Absolutely. And being a schizophrenic brand is absolutely the opposite of what I teach in this book. I mean, what okay. I teach in this book is this concept of what I call an engagement ladder, right? So social media is the way to get from no one knows you to people are buying lots of things from you and mm -hmm. encouraging everyone else they know to buy from you. And that's why social media is really effective. I, I like to say in the book, you can think of social media like a cocktail party, right? So how do you want to you know, perform quotes as well at a cocktail party. You want to be engaging and funny. You want to pique someone's interest. You want to maybe exchange a business card to maybe follow up at a later date. You do not want to 
rush into a cocktail party mm -hmm. with your new widget and start talking mm -hmm. to your boss's ex-wife's ex-girlfriend's stepson and trying to get him to buy it right now, right? And that's what people do on social media literally every day. It's a yeah. problem. And you don't want to act completely out of character and they go, whoa, well, that was a bit strange today. That's not what I expected from that person. So here's the thing. And I'm sure you, Claire, this is this is probably a, a the, the Mark Cuban uh, example was a perfect one. And this is something I'm sure you bump up against all the time. But we live in this kind of shortcut culture, right, where people are always looking for silver bullets, for shortcuts, for something fast. Uh, and. It's really and it's really hard to build a, a brand fast, right? You uh, and not without looking at all the different components. So, and I guess guess that's the thing is sometimes people I don't think realize that there is a lot of work that goes into building a brand. So I guess so maybe if you could just break down uh, how you approach you know brand building, especially using digital media, and maybe give people a better insight into the fact that it does take a lot and there is a lot of hard work involved, and most of all, a lot of thought and strategy. Absolutely. So I think what I try to do in this book is I try to make it as simple as possible for people. And one of the ways to make it as simple as possible is to not become so overwhelmed by all the many platforms out there. So mm. one of, I think, the best parts of this book is there's an evaluation you take in it, which basically tells you which platform you should focus on, right? If you've got more resources, you can focus on two or three or four or five, but you have limited, but if you have limited resources, this is the platform for you. So if you read the book, you can take that evaluation and that instantly allows you to laser in on, okay, how do I build a long-term sustainable brand of raving fans on this platform? And it allows you, you know, about 20% of your time to experiment on other platforms. Mm -hmm. You always want to sort of keep your eye out for what else is working, right? I mean, for everyone who went all in on Vine, at some point they had to kind of pivot and realize yeah. that, you know, maybe Instagram was the next big thing. So you always want to kind of keep your eye out. But really, it's about focusing on the platform that works for you and your audience and your social media marketing manager or you, if that's you, right? Because that's mm -hmm. more important than anything else. Um, another thing that we do in the book that I think makes it really easy for folks to understand is we use a, a number of case studies from existing brands, basically showing you exactly how they use this, this model that I teach you mm -hmm. and, and how, they've, how they've used it well in simple, specific ways. So you can model that. You, know, you don't want to copy it as you're saying. What, what works mm -hmm. for someone else isn't going to work for you, but you can model it for your brand. And, and I believe you can see some great success that way. And then how does uh, and then so if somebody's listening to this who is in in marketing and is uh, looking after or in charge of brand building or social media as part of what they do, the toughest thing for them a lot of the time is to be able to demonstrate the impact, right? Because mm -hmm. some of the metrics are maybe not what people are used to, and they don't uh, manifest in 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 the ways that people are used to receiving data, and say. So how do you how do you help both sides, both the person who's trying to show that they're having an impact and the person who's receiving the information to be able to see or set the expectations about what they should be looking for? So I think that's a really, really excellent question. And one of the things I do in the very first chapter of the book is kind of break down the kind of myth about social media. And I think, well, there are probably a few myths about social media, but one of the big ones is that social media is really about brand marketing. It's not about direct marketing or direct mm -hmm. sales marketing. And so I basically break it down to tell people what those two things are. And I think it's the best defense you can ever have if someone's asking you for metrics. And it's the best argument you have if you're trying to show your metrics to someone else. So brand marketing is, of course, marketing that is focused on on awareness, whereas mm -hmm. direct marketing is, or direct sales marketing is marketing that is directly focused on sales. And really all of social media or, you know, 99% of social media mostly is about brand marketing, building your awareness and building your brand. So any metrics you are thinking about, and I mentioned some of my favorite sort of analytics tools in the book, any metrics you're thinking about should really be focused on brand marketing. And I think that's a big mistake that a lot of people do. I mean, I even see reports from social media marketing agencies that really are, are focusing on direct sales marketing. And, you mm -hmm. know, I want to say that's, that's actually not where you're going to see the greatest benefit on social media. And you're going to spend a lot of money trying to get that one sale from someone who's, <laughs> who's never met you, right? 
when in, in contrast, it would be much better to try to build a, a base of, of fans, of supporters via brand marketing. Yeah, and obviously that gets back to your point of, uh, if you're not on the right platform or you're focusing on the wrong platform, you're going after the wrong audience, you're never going to get that. You're never going to get that result because you're, you're fishing in the wrong, uh, fishing in the wrong fishing hole. Uh, but I guess that's the, that's the essence of it here is understanding the difference between direct sales marketing and brand marketing. And the, because let's face it, at the end of the day, the question you're going to get from, from senior management often is how many leads does that drive? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have a good answer for that, then you're going to see your 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 um, the investment in social media go down, right? Pretty fast. Right. But what I encourage people to do mm-hmm. is to really map out your own. When you read the book, uh, you can look at what this concept of an engagement ladder really needs to means to you, and then you can pretty directly map it out. So if we're talking yeah. about, I'm, I'm sure a lot of your listeners, for them, their their main social media platform is going to be LinkedIn. I sure. don't want to say all of them, but but mm-hmm. many of them will probably find that LinkedIn is the most useful, right? So you can start mapping out what that engagement ladder means for you. Maybe the the, the lowest level or the most, you know, the, the, the widest part of the funnel might be a blog post. And then you go up to someone commenting or leaving some sort of reaction to your blog post. And then you're getting to them connecting with you. And then you're getting to a conversation, right? So if you're able to show steps in the engagement ladder, uh, you're able to get a lot of the benefit of, of someone saying, hey, where are we getting the traction here? And then how do you how do you uh, try to stand? I mean, we talked about obviously going viral and I'll put that aside, but try to stand out a little bit because, you know, I always worry about the yep. the, the social media fatigue and like, I yep. mean, it's, LinkedIn is a great example, right? LinkedIn mm-hmm. has gone through these peaks and troughs of effectiveness, right? And and unfortunately, of late, it seems to become a, a spamming tool uh, for many mm-hmm. people. So how do you how do you ensure that you stand out by the way that you use these tools? So what I really encourage people to do is to develop basically a basic social media editorial calendar and a basic social media schedule, right? So coming up with that and the book outlines it will, will get you on track and to get sort of your, your brain around when posts are going out and what you should be posting about. And it's all you know pretty detailed and pretty pu- plug and play in the book. Now, Mm -hmm. when you have that in place, though, what is super important is pattern disruption. And that's exactly what you're talking about. And that is sometimes some of the most effective content that you will see on the platform or that you will share on the platform. Uh, Pattern disruption. So an example from LinkedIn, for example, uh, one of my mentors, Marshall Goldsmith, a big executive coach, has Mm -hmm. almost 2 million followers on LinkedIn. One of his best posts of all time on LinkedIn was a personal photo of him at Thanksgiving, right? And I talk about this in the book as a perfect example of pattern disruption, right? People don't follow Marshall Goldsmith for pictures about his family. They follow him for leadership insight, insight about executive coaching. But if he does a little bit of that, you know, just kind of throws that little bit of salt on top of things, Mm. then, then he can get a lot of engagement and he does. And so things like that, really work. You know, in, in my own experience, because part of my experience kept up in the book, you know, I, I was an early employee at Twitter. I have a lot of Twitter followers and I happened to go viral when I live tweeted my daughter's birth about five years ago. And for me, that worked also because it was a crazy pattern disruptor, pattern yeah. disruptor, right? Other people weren't talking about going into labor on, you know, late Friday night when, when I happened to do that in April of 2014. So always looking for those opportunities within your larger social strategy is really important. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good point. And Marshall's a, a friend of this program as well. And in fact, actually just doesn't live that far away. It's a few blocks, a, a few. Rancho exits. Santa Fe, yeah. <laughs> Santa Fe, indeed. Uh, okay, so in the last few minutes, uh, uh, Claire, do you want to tell people a little bit more about yourself, how they can find out more about you, and when it, and the date that the book will be released? Yeah, so the book comes out from HarperCollins Leadership on October 22nd of 2019. And what I really encourage folks to do if they're interested in this material is to go to socialmediamadesimple.com. And what we've done is we've recorded basically a a five-part mini video course uh, that introduces you to the concepts of the book. It's kind of more high level than the book itself, but you can get that mini course for free. It'll 
you know, give you a lot of what you want to know. And, and then it'll help you figure out if, if maybe the book is, is right for, for you. And that's socialmediamadesimple.com. That's fantastic. Well, we'll also have your profile on salespop.com and uh, .net, and we'll also have a, a link to the book there as well. Uh, I would highly encourage people to, to check it out because I really do honestly believe that people need help in this area because I think we've reached a point of, I, I had this conversation with somebody the other day where I, uh, they, they interviewed me because I had put out this post a while ago about called noise and noise and was saying yeah. that if everybody's producing content, who's reading it, right? If we're all producers, who are the, who are the consumers, right? And, mm. and so it was interesting. Uh, it was an interesting conversation with them because um, they're a major producer of content. But I think, mm. I think we have to get to a more thoughtful and deliberate place because otherwise we're, we are just creating noise. I 100% agree. And not only are we creating it, but then it's even harder for us to rise above it. So yes, exactly. All right. Perfect. Listen, thanks, Claire. Really appreciate it. Uh, as I said, our first guest from Argentina, from Buenos Aires, is fantastic. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks so much. Have a great day.